Hello, friends. Hello, pirates. Hello, friends of Pirate Chain. Are it's me, E. Giuliano. It's July 20. July 20. Two thirds of the month. Down. July. So here we are. And I want to share this screen. The price charts. Yes. Yes, the price charts. Firstly, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Thanks for liking the videos. Thanks for making whatever comments. It's great. Much appreciated. Okay, we're going to start with the pirate, pirate chain price charts, the RBTC. Let's just hide a couple things here out of sight, out of mind. What are we looking at? Well, previously we were looking at a line chart and we said, okay, this zone here, it would be nice to hold it when we seem to be coming back and returning. And thus we did, we did, we did, we did, we did. We held it so far, so good. However, there is the straight down and the straight up in between. And if this cannot be held further, well, this seems like the next reasonable level. The, the other idea here that you might be recognizing is about 12 bars based on, it was on, based on the candles. And so another 12 bars takes us, this is the time axis horizontal to around July 27. Okay, something to think about now. Um, if we reinstate our Japanese candlesticks, friends of such candlesticks, hello, there you are. So this is what we we're looking at, 12 and 12, uh, basically looking to hold this zone. Now on a, on a weekly time frame, on a weekly time frame, oops. Oh, right, that's why, because with uh, my friends, we are looking at a KuCoin price chart here for RBTC, and that doesn't have as much data. Uh, so I was actually confused. I, I had just been looking at the, the CoinX exchange uh, information. So this is using the get Aurox terminal. It's free right now if you wanna check out in the description, there's a uh, referral there if you're interested to use it all the trading view tools and all that. Anyway, those of you who have been here and are still here, thanks for continuing to watch these videos. I hope they're educational, entertaining. I hope they're bringing you some sort of value in your life, even if they just help you to sleep better. Okay, now, in fact, that would be, I would love to bring that kind of value to you if that's what you need. So where are we in this price charts after that quick tangent? We're on a KuCoin price chart. And so we're at the daily time frame. Um, a, a Bollinger Band shows that we're starting, we, we are effectively riding it downward. We'll look on the other chart, uh, that information. Okay, four hourly, the same idea here. We're, we're just within that zone and looking to chop there. However, we're below the 20 period average of a narrowing Bollinger Bands. So that's potentially of concern. Let's for the short term of a four hour time frame. Let's see what happens. Okay, so after this, uh, I'm going to talk also about the BTC chart because that, that, of course, plays in big with the RBTC price. Okay, RUSDT right now bouncing around the same level as the previous uh, low. And so, yeah, that's what we're watching, what we're looking at here in the, in the uh, USDT pricing chart. Uh, interesting looking candle here, although the color is red, so, but it has uh, a strength to it with the body uh, at the top here and the wick below like a hammer. Okay, now moving along, we're going to just hop over to the CoinX data for the RBTC price. So that's uh, why I went onto the weekly. I wanted to note 
Okay, we have that strong candle beginning July in terms of a reversal for from this wow trend. And then we have this green candle with, with rejection right at that 20 week moving average. And so here we sit in this current week at the very beginning of the week feels like, and we'll see it on the BTC price chart that the prices in, in overall could be going down. However, um, we'll see because this is a BTC R price chart or our BTC price chart, then maybe it'll find more of a sideways action is because the market seems to value the, the, the dollar prices of things for their market caps and such. All right, now moving along, uh, we are going to just move, we're going to look at this daily, like I had mentioned here about the price basically riding that 20 period average down. So that's cool. That's strong. It's above the 20 period average. That's a good thing to note. Great. Uh, one thing to take a look at here, we have our, um, we have our indicators enabled. We've got a Bollinger Bands here. Uh, and we've got this 200 day moving average here. Held some nice support through here uh, for just a short time was below and definitely intraday. So yeah, let's see what, what can happen. We're starting to narrow these Bollinger Bands. So maybe even if we don't go below the, the 20, the 20 day, maybe the next support on a daily based on this up down candle or this up candle here would be down here to roughly the 55 on this chart. So maybe it's just 6,000 on the uh, KuCoin pricing. So <clears throat> that's besides the point. This chart mainly for the, for the shape and the structure uh, more than the actual numbers and levels. Uh, and in this sense here, if we can stay to the upside, we're definitely looking for that uh, 8,000 Satoshi level. Uh, but <clears throat> the, the green momentum here, lagging indicator MACD that is showing, it, it helped a bit, but it, now it's, it's waning. So uh, let's see, uh, let's see where we can lead to. Now, if we go in to this four hour time period, okay? We go into this four hour time period. And we start to see, interestingly, okay, we made it into that cloud, night, you know, halfway through and uh, been working through it since. That's good. That's pretty interesting. So here we are now, though, uh, the price is actually below the 20 period average, not doing as well as on the daily. So if it's to break below, then that's, that's where it's going. And considering that it, we're at the lower end of the cloud, uh, we could definitely see a breakdown back to back to these levels. However, noting the, the Kumo twist ahead and the potential to find some upside, uh, a little bit more upside momentum, at least on the BTC price, that could lead to some something higher. Uh, however, this is again a four hour price chart. So even if it does go down, um, it could come back down and then go back up, right? That seems to be what it does anyway. So what level would that be? Again, that would be around this area if it's coming down. And if it's going back up, then probably gonna try and test up into here, right? At least, uh, or even if it's a small up, like it'll come up into, into this, this zone here, just above the, the cloud and then make its way back down. Let, let's see what, we get, but that's just four hour, four hour time frame. All right, not much more to, to report in that sense because uh, you know we're just really trying to find out what's going to happen on that BTC price because that's going to determine what the real like weakness and volatility will be overall for everything in that sense because it's it's basically the barometer and uh, at least at this time it is. And yeah, so that's the the R. BTC price. I just want to reconfirm on that daily time frame. Uh, just want to just want to hold this line here roughly, even as it rides down. So we could be moving down with the line. That's still okay as long as this can stay above. So just keep an eye on that. Okay, that's basically the idea I wanted to share. Um, okay, 
and then but eventually this 200 day moving average is going to move so let's see there's going to be a cross at some point unless there's a, a significant up move um, for this next little bit all right oh now we move into that price chart btc 29 wow okay so what are we looking at here didn't just where i was going back monthly i mean monthly is just, just a strange deal here um it it hasn't really done anything but go down there's no rebound up yet at all that's significant there even this this angulation here i mean okay fine let's take though a candlestick chart and boom there you go so now you see that yes there was some down up down up type of movements but in that format it is one two three four red candles in a row possibly you could say oh well if this were green that's fine so then you have the three in a row because the, imagining the top candle there being green or red the body is so small fine we can let that be the neutral turning point candle and now we have these three significant down moving candles and even though there is a bit of up down in the pricing here like especially during this previous month of june uh, it it only it doesn't show up on a monthly level yet so and when we look back it this could be a time for a rounding and a sideways and now the question is does that dump further or does it give the the up eventually a move up um you know is it like one of these well you know for getting that wick or even including a wick like that because some people are considering huge wicks all the way down into the teens of prices but what I'm looking at here and seeing, you know, on the monthly is is, is much less clear, uh, other than the fact that it's still in a huge uptrend, and this is a quite a significant correction considering previous corrections. It's three monthly reds in a row, uh, which is not unheard of, um, and usually happens at the significant times of downward movement but overall if there can be some rounding here that can be sustained then even just you know following green candle green candle whatever uh, that, that that brings it back into a position of strength and continued up uptrending now however that's kind of where i was going with with this idea on the monthly is that there's not even any notable zigzagging pattern yet like there is here like there is here it's more like really it is more like one of these kind of rounding things so far um, yeah so in that sense um maybe it's meant to to bounce up at some point and then come back down or do it whatever it needs to do but it it doesn't if it's heavy who if it's going to be a bigger zigzag pattern that's that's huge it definitely could have some sort of like up move and then a further down move uh, that would be massive time frames uh, and yes it could be like that that comes back to that whole deflationary argument so on the huger time frames what kind of deflationary argument is going to prevail we shall see so let's take it to the weekly instead where we can start looking at some shape and start counting some things and start determining uh because i do i do think that on on these type of time frames that we're looking at here a weekly is a solid foundation to build an idea so in this case we come back again to the idea here we have this ichimoku cloud friends of ichimoku it's willing to give us the support we need it doesn't even have to touch it it just the region here is a good supportive region 
and this region here, if supportive, will lead to a good move up. And maybe it is a bit of a V, but on a bigger scale. I don't know. However, because we can measure it more on this weekly with these moves, it has a bit more, maybe some action like that, viewing it. Whatever it is, you know, we will find out. But, and, and even then, one thing I'm doing here is just wondering, okay, if we can look at some shapes, count some ideas, maybe we can figure out where would be a reasonable place for a reversal, even if the reversal only brings us back to this 20 week moving average at around the 45,000, 44,000. And by then, who knows, it might only be at a 40,000 level. Uh, but yeah, getting back to 40K, 39K, whatever it's gonna be, um, based so even with the confluence of this 20 week average. So when would that reversal be? When or at what type of price level? Could, would, could or would that be? All right, so we start to look, that's where those dates were. So we have to pick a top. We'll pick a couple of different tops, uh, maybe, but definitely we'll pick this top. And that is based on that, uh, we, if we go to the candlesticks again. Okay, that's gonna be based on this right here. And it's gonna have that terminal zigzag. That, that happens here. You can see it based here. Uh, terminating this whole up move and then moving into the correction now. So let's take that line, friends of line charts. Here we are again. And the next thing to do, taking this 5th of April week as the top, we can imagine, let's say, let's say, let's say, Let's get a little closer here. Firstly, I would like to recognize the MACD is relatively narrowing momentum, is getting relatively more positive, okay? The momentum, even though it's, it's in negative territory currently. Uh, and on the RSI, we're nearing that bounceable level, okay? If we are gonna follow some sort of trend line. Now, Let's just take this. Maybe you're watching this whole video all the way through normal speed. That's great. Maybe you're in 1.5, 1.75x speed. Cool. And maybe you let me know in the comments below. Just curious if you're still watching either way. Thanks, this is great. I hope uh, again that it's of value. So let's see. So let's say we're from here and we're gonna take you know, corrective moves of ABC. So we can imagine, let's say this ABC, but this, would be a more of a flat. And it's a huge elongation there. If we wanna measure that, that flat, what we would do is take our Fibonacci retracement tool from the zero to A line, zero to A wave. So for the A wave, okay. And we're gonna see how much does the B wave retrace the A wave to determine if it's a flat or a zigzag. This pink, purple line here is the 81. So it, it goes into the normal zigzag territory. So it's not even close to a zigzag. Uh, sorry, normal flat territory. So it's not close to a zigzag. Sometimes it's around the 61.8, which is the barrier for zigzag or flat, uh, and according to that Neely method, friends of Neely method and Neo wave. Yeah, so flat pattern. Okay, that's how we check flat or not. And then we are going to check what type or what type of relationship it had, uh, the A wave and the sorry, the, the B wave and the, the C wave. So we take the fib retracement tool again, and we measure the retracement of the B wave. And it's just about a 2618. So isn't that cool? So we got a, a 2618 on that uh, flat-like pattern. So there's one move. Okay. The next thing we have here is not necessarily clear. And in, in some sense, this wave right here might be what's cons considered an X wave. 
So we might be getting some form of A, B, C, X, A, B, C. However, one thing that makes me wonder, maybe not, is just maybe the, the, the size, the shape, the degree of this type of A, B, C here um, isn't significant enough. I don't know. If, if we are breaking through this and we are super bear more mode, you know, for longer time frames, then, then maybe this whole thing is like a, a is 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 along the lines of a of an A, and then some sort of B, and then some sort of further C, uh, possible, um, painful, possibly that as well. All right, let's see. Now, I'm I'm not thinking that yet though. Uh, I'm more looking here at where is it going to bounce first, because it does get the sense that that bounce is coming on a weekly frame, but that could be a few weeks away still. Uh, 9th of August could be coming into play here. Uh, so so that was the idea, for example, if we were to take from that first section, it's about six, and then we were to take, well, the first thing I did was I took the second section until the drop, this current drop. So that was again six, and then the next, six if we take this whole drop and we were to make it six it would take us to that 9th august week now generally if it's going to be really related then the proportions should be somehow different um so one one thing i thought though again is if this is an x wave here from this c up here to uh, let's call it this point here right x um so if we're doing that, then that's a three a three week uh, period, and then if we're considering this as our next section, we have let's say the potential for oh wow currently in the sixth week. Interesting. So there's one idea. Uh, six bars similar to the A. Another option would be. If the A is 61.8 roughly, and the the B maybe is 38.2, or you know, you have these kinds of ideas, you get maybe nine weeks. So again, that's that 9th of August situation. Okay, so these are possibilities, uh, just curiosities, things to pay attention to, things to remember and, and look back upon. Okay, actually. Let's keep that there for now. Okay, so there's that idea, ABC. Oh, actually, no, now we do wanna get rid of that. We wanna get rid of this because, okay, that's a time idea. And now we go back to the price idea and we say, all right, so if this isn't, let's like, we're just taking some ideas. If this isn't some form of X wave here, then we can have this be another ABC. If we want, we can choose this to be an ABC, something like this, okay. Roughly, that's not the, you know, it doesn't have to be exact, but if that is the case, okay, which we do not know, but we'll find out. We're going to take our trend based fib extension, measure the A wave, and then start from the beginning of the C wave. And okay, here's so this was part of the idea is like, where can we start finding some potential levels? So, one of the one of the ideas for the levels is. Uh, you know, like a 1618, which is around the, the 28, low 28 thousands um, to the 27 thousands, depending where you want to start your, to the high 27 thousands, depending on where you want to start your ideas. Okay. Uh, and then further ideas are going to come on shorter term time frame, but that's one idea. Um, another idea that some people like to consider, or not even want to say some people, I have said, okay, well, what if this is, I mean, this is higher. It seems more reasonable uh, that it's the top, but maybe this is some sort of failure. And then we get some strange, well, not strange. It's not even strange. Like you could, you could fit it. Fun with Elliott waves. Um, you could get some sort of flat pattern here where you get an ABC. So let's say that we're at the end of the fifth wave and this becomes your ABC. Uh, this is possible, and that as part of a bigger zigzag would give you the 
ABC over here. Or if it were part of, you know, an ABCX. Okay, so that would be something like that, or even, 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 well, let's see. Uh, let's say we're, we're there, okay. So that, that type of ABC uh, pattern, let's make it purple. Okay, so that ABC pattern, uh, if we were to, to work with that, sometimes we, well, firstly, it would also be a, a flat type of pattern because if we were to take from here and measure the B wave, sorry, the, the A wave and, and, and see what the retracement of the B wave is, you see the B wave here retraces beyond the 81. So it'd be some normal flat pattern. However, the normal B wave, sorry, of the flat pattern would result if we retrace the B wave from the beginning to the end of the B wave, we see, wow, again, that 2618, right? Did we already even do that? So fine, because why? Well, because this area and this area, or, or sorry, and this area are very close. So whether we start here or here, it's still this kind of flat, pattern with this 2618 move down. Uh, so yeah, at the, at the end of it, I don't think it truly matters yet if we're trying to figure out, oops, I'm pointing with my finger. If we're trying to figure out what's happening down here. Um, some people want to go directly from the top into a, a impulse of one, two, three, four, five type of thing, but uh, it doesn't seem as reasonable yet for me. Okay, now that's where we are for that. That's counting it on a bigger scale. Um, so far, that's what we have. Other option is, again, it's just a, an ABC where we have, let's say this again is the top and this becomes our A, whoops. And this is in some format, our B, and then now we're getting our C. Whoa, mama. Okay, however, huh. Maybe the C is going to be some form of truncated or whatever. Let's see if that could even be possible. So if we take our elongation here, fib tool, and we start from what we would consider the top, we go to our A and then we take our B. Wow. So it's a, definitely, it would be more than 38.2. 38.2 is at 25.5-ish. So you would have to go beyond that, but you would go less than 61.8 and you could have some sort of truncation. However, just going down to the 19.5, or even let's say somebody takes us into the, the high 18s, that itself would be a, uh, a normal zigzag pattern. Uh, so, cool. Um, that's also a possibility. Cool, but maybe highly undesirable for some and highly desirable for others, right? Okay, that's that idea. Uh, and if we wanna instead choose this top here as the level for that B wave, um, for the C wave to, to compare from, then here, there's the 61.8 here is at the 23 level. So uh, wouldn't uh, have to get too much farther. And a one-to-one, -one, well, unfortunately brings us all the way down to that 13,000 level. So not thinking that that's the case, just doesn't, Appear to be the case in that sense. So if we take it now, wow, friends of long videos, you still with me? Question is, is the friends of short videos with us? Now we are on a daily time frame. Okay, this is where it starts to get a bit more local. So here we are on a daily time frame, and we are saying, all right, we are just now beginning to breach that Bollinger Band. We kind of did it over here. So we're just now in these last few days uh, breaching this Bollinger Band, okay? To the downside significantly, we're making that move. What does that mean? Well, where are we in that move? Uh, similarly, maybe we are making a few different possibilities here. One of the possibilities ends up being a um, uh, 
another one of these double zigzag patterns, maybe an ABC, X, ABC, or some other format. However, it looks like it looks like as we we turn more and more impulsively down, well, we're going to look at the four hour, and we say, okay, what is that? What is happening here? What is possible? On the four hour, we're getting a few ideas. One of the ideas, again, here it is, is the A B C. Okay, so we have this ABC and then some form of, of X wave into the next ABC pattern. Okay, that's fine. We could have just an ABC and now we're out of it. This could be on the four hour chart signaling we're out of it, but on that daily, we just started. So this seems like out once, back in quickly, out a second time, back in alternation on these two corrections here. We could be seeing some form of impulse pattern. <clears throat> so if we are seeing an impulse pattern, then we're near the end of it. At some point, whether we start, whether we start here and start going, you know, like, oh, let's do this. I don't know, people want to do these types of things. Maybe they want to do that. I don't know. And then they want to find a five. I mean, you could, um, you could also really more realistically, you know, you start maybe coming around here and you start saying, fine, is this like a, is, are we even done already? Well, the geometry of it, maybe, but not, not convinced especially again, what's happening on the daily. So then, although again, maybe this is a bigger ABC because you end up getting, you know, in this type of five wave move, you get your A as a five, and then you get some sort of three going this way, and then you'll get your next five, okay? Uh, if that's the case, uh, we could be in for a beating. But we've already seen that, you know, again, taking this kind of movement, imagining it's somewhere around here. Again, that's, we start seeing moves down to that high 27,000 to 28,000 level for just a one-to-one. -one. If we are, if we're going further than one-to-one, -one, uh, you know, a one, six, one, eight is, is a 26 and a half thousand ish, 26,000 level. So we could get that now. We want to correlate that with previous price structure. Oh, wow, this is a four hour price chart. Look how much scrolling that's almost there. There it is. Wow. So, yes, we have this price con confluence around 29, but we're looking here around, was this the top of here is like 27.5. So, this area here definitely into the 26s. Okay. So that seems reasonable if we're looking at it like that. We can see uh, if we are impulsing down with some form of, you know, wow. And then we're, but in fact, that impulse is part of a, of a bigger zigzag. Um, and we're just doing one of them. Then, yeah, then there we are. Now, will it take that exact shape and, and format? Not necessarily, but it, that's the basic idea. Okay, that makes sense. If instead it is just some final impulse down, then where where might we where might we take it? It it just it seems to go to the same areas because let's imagine. Let's imagine it's starting here. Okay. Uh, it comes for the one and then a two and a three and then some four somewhere. Now the five, 
I mean, it would have to extend because these are too similar unless the five is really going to, now we, this, this is the case for a, for the BTC price not going below 29,000. Like the five could, the five could just, uh, could fizzle, you know, fizzle out anywhere around here. Um, however, the reason that I'm looking at these is because, okay, if, if the one and the three are, well, the three is longer than the one's fine, uh, but that means the five would be shorter than the three, fine. Uh, and if it is the same length as the one, from around here, roughly whatever, say it's here or here, then you're in the 28,000s, okay? But this just doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't seem as, as would be. So far, my thinking is something along the lines of that, that ABC. Either way, that's why maybe it doesn't exactly matter, but the all roads lead to <laughs> the same destination, which is there are ways of moving the price down and getting when we when we start looking, for example, if the one and the three are are going to be combining as one unit length, and then you compare the, the five with that from around the whatever level here. Then again, you're in that twenty-seven thousand zone. So if the five is an is the extended wave, then it's going to if it's a one-to-one -one compared to the the one plus the three equals the five, then then it's going to be something along that line. So relatively speaking, we are not far from the potential bottoming capitulation. What do you want to call it? Let's say we go to, I mean, just even 10%, just another 10%, which is not unheard of, especially in these markets, brings us down to uh, below the below the 27,000, so into the 26,000s. So we could we could see that 20, 26,000s is 10%. Is so so that, that that's where we where we stand right now. Uh, it looks like the Impulsion downward will continue the the daily chart is showing that it's you know it's not clear it could be one of these here just just like this here we had these two down moves which were also uh, about ten percent this one's like eleven percent and then about nine up and then another nine or 10 down, but basically the same idea is that you could have some negative momentum here, but it's looking like it is fading uh, eventually, you know, even 10 more percent um, looks like enough in this chart. 10 more percent would bring us roughly around here. What we're gonna do is take a look at the previous pricing and say, okay, well, nothing is very uh, strong back here. So in on those four hour time frames, it seems more reasonable to find prices, but you know, we're we're at this level here, which is 28. Um, and then the other level down here is the 26 is, so yeah, why not? Let's just leave it around here and see how that goes. Uh, looking back onto the weekly price chart, just to, get an idea and yeah i mean totally possible to see some some price come down and then make its way back up and do its thing whatever okay oh we gotta fight we gotta fight cool seems seems doable seems reasonable now this is all the way to January of 2022. So some people actually think that um, it will go instead of, whoops, instead of sideways like this, once it recovers, 
they have a, a different idea of maybe the recovery type of movement instead of flattening out, maybe taking off and going for the final leg. I mean, hey, this is 70,000 right here. So 80, 90, you know, these are possibilities they think is gonna happen before 2022. I tend to think, um, I tend to think, well, maybe all time highs before 2022, but I don't know if it's so clear that, that it's gonna be just for the rest of this year and you know, moving back and then bear market for the, the rest of the next couple of years. I mean, I, I do tend to think also things are looking bigger. The degree is bigger. That's the idea of lengthening cycles. And the degree is bigger and diminishing return ideas as well. The degree of uh, the magnitude, the degree of money that needs to come in to move it up su substantially on a sustainable level uh, needs to be much more as well and is much more. Um, yeah, that seems to be what it is. Just a bigger degree, just a bigger degree. Uh, and the time frame will be a bigger degree as well in terms of the moves. Oh, well, we'll see. This is this is great. Just uh, do your best, stay alive, so you can watch. Right? Enjoy your favorite snack along the at the same time. On this weekly price chart again, working our way back towards some positive momentum. interesting times indeed definitely didn't see this kind of degree back here uh, in the 2017-2018 and it's uh yeah it, it's it's gonna be well anyway stick around i hope uh it's been good for you i think we're gonna end it here those are the basic ideas that i've been uh, considering and we're going to say bye for now. All right. Take care of yourselves. Catch some, some merchandise for uh, the next run up. All right. I could definitely vouch for the, uh, the merchandise here. It, it, it fits well. It feels good. The quality is good. So there you go. Awesome. And there's a coupon in the uh, description as well. So coupon code. All righty then. Goodbye until next time. Love, peace, happiness. Go get it.